Let's talk about the first book of Lankmar by Fritz Lieber. So this is uh, a fancy masterworks library bind up of the first four Lankmar novels. Uh, sh they're short novels or novellas depending on the exact length. Um, I think they probably all qualify for Hugo Best novel by length. Uh, they're by Fritz Lieber. They include one story or chapter by uh, Harry Otto Fisher, I believe, uh, The Lords of Quarmel, which is set in the same universe and uses the main characters uh, with permission. It was a cooperative thing early on, and Lieber does later include them. Uh, they're published from 1939 to the 70s, the early 70s in this edition, in this book. The second book of Langmar goes up to 1989, I think. So you've got a 50-year publishing history for the character, which is a, an incredible... Uh, range, I think. I can't think of many other fantasy characters with that sort of range in publishing. I think this is some of the best adventure slash sword and sorcery fantasy there is. Uh, that's probably the easy way to put it. I think it's what, some of the best adventure slash sword and sorcery there is. So let very quickly summarising the, the contents of the four novels. Swords and it's called the Swords of Lankmar series, so all the books start with swords. Swords and Deviltry. Uh, is the origin stories of the characters. We'll get to that. Swords Against Death, it, it has some of the early adventures of our characters in Lankmar and then their journeys to the mysterious western continent of the world of Naewon and then their journeys back and then a few more things in Lankmar. Swords in the Mist is a loosely grouped theme of, uh, group of stories themed around mist from a magical mist that attacks people to uh, stories about mist and the sea when they're travelling on the sea to a strange mist that comes out of a castle uh, in a weird story. Um, there is, that also includes, I think, the first Lankmar story, Adept's Gambit. And Swords Against Wizardry is basically two small linking stories and then two big chunkier stories, one about a mountain climb and one by Harry Otto Fisher about going down into the depths of the earth, so kind of the opposite ends of the world. And they're very good books. All of them are worth reading. I enjoyed reading all of them, uh, all four sub books within this. Uh, Lieber has a lot of writing strengths. He has an easy prose style most of the time. It has its ornate elements. It certainly fits the pre-New Wave fantasy paradigm of writing. Um, and so there are some habits people don't like, but mostly it's quite easy to read. It's not as baroque and ornate as, say, Robert E. Howard. Uh, or H.P. Lovecraft, nowhere near as much as those two, in fact. Um, it's much more approachable and light-hearted as a style. Um, he's marvellously inventive. He's very inventive. This is speculative fiction. It's not just a fantasy setting for adventures. It is truly speculative fiction. Uh, Fafford's culture is really well realised in the origin story about that. Uh, Lankmar itself is a wonderfully realised, grimy, archetypal fantasy city. Uh, and really one of the first, maybe the first, of its type. Um, I can't think of another where there is that sort of grimy, down-and-out fantasy city. There's really interesting concepts uh, in various stories. The Jewels in the Forest, really interesting concept for the dungeon they go to. Uh, the stuff behind Stardock, uh, both the execution of the mountaineering and the, the, the ideas of the stuff at the top of the mountain, are really good. Uh, the idea of planar gates and portals in the wrong branch, really good and creative. He's really funny as well. Um, it's not comedy fiction strictly, but it definitely has a degree of comic fantasy. And with recent books I've reviewed in that genre being Tales of the Dying Earth is often comic fantasy, as is Harold Shea, the, the, the incomplete enchanter Harold Shea. Uh, those are both comic fantasy that are, though they're more often dedicated to comedy, than Lieber. They are less funny. Uh, there's also a reason I think the balance between drama and comedy um, is probably one of the inspirations for Terry Pratchett. We know that Lankmar is. Lankmar is an inspiration for the name Ankmore Pork, partial anagram. This was a big influence on Pratchett. And when you think about Pratchett being much more than a comedy fantasy writer, uh, I've reviewed one of his books on this channel, go and check that out for more. When you realise that Pratchett is more than a comedy writer, he's actually a very serious writer of drama and of human stories. Um, and you can see more parallels there. You know, this is comic fantasy, but not just comic fantasy. It's much more than uh, than those things. Um, Fafford and the Grey Mauser, that's the big thing. They are such wonderful characters. They are sword and sorcery heroes. 
And in that sense, yeah, there are some things for us that seem like cliches. They love women, they love wine, uh, they are constantly broke, they love adventure, um, they are very good fighters, uh, you know, that sort of thing. They're rogues, they're thieves. Um, so in that sense, that's so far so familiar, and you could say, well, he executes that very well, and he does. But it's more than that again. Uh, they are more than Conan. I love Conan, uh, and I think those stories are perhaps the best action stories ever of their type. Uh, but I think possibly here we have something else going on to do with the characters. Conan is this force of nature. He's actually an incredibly interesting character with real depth. But Fafford and the Grey Mouse are much more human than Conan. Uh, they are both driven to heartbreak by, uh, by heartbreak to their new lives. Fafford is a good man uh, who is somewhat savage and, uh, and prone to flights of fancy and rage, uh, but also never lets, never lets injustice get away with it. Uh, the Grey Mouser becomes from the mouse, he goes from being the mouse to the Grey Mouser, and that's partly because his spirit is grey, he's neither black nor white. But he is always drawn in the path of, of justice and of decency by his friendship. And that's the final point I make, I think, on that, which is that their friendship is the peak of these books, I think. Uh, in terms of great friendships in literature, this has to be, you know, top ten at least. Poverty might separate them for a time. They might fall out over, uh, over a romantic love interest or over some objective. They might even be on different sides of a battle but their great devotion to each other uh, their understanding of each other triumphs overall in the end um, and uh, that's the idea of friendship um, as a as a valued quality and trait uh, that is invested in by an author i think is semi-rare nowadays not completely rare obviously but you think we get very few sam and frodo's and we get very few faffords and the gray mousers and sometimes there are weird moments that to me feel a bit out of place or uh, you might almost say are, are outdated um, that might be the wrong word but you get what I'm saying there are sometimes his his lightheartedness undercuts a dramatic point uh, you feel like um, even in one of my favorite stories I'll mention it again in a second Stardock uh, there is a degree to which the tone of the first three quarters and the last quarter wobble and shift a bit in a way that you're like this is a really good story but I kind of wish there was a bit more tonal consistency but on the whole, these are great stories. Uh, my favourite specific stories, if you are wondering, are uh, in the first book, The Snow Women. Fafford's origin story is just a really well realised, pretty straight, um, there's comic elements certainly, but pretty straight story of youthful love and adventure. Um, and the culture is really well realised and the world is well realised and it's very effective. Uh, in the second book, Claws in the Night is tonally really good. Um, on the note of tonal issues. Tonal, uh, uh, Claws in the Night is a really good, creepy, dark, dramatic story, very much in the decaying city, um, which uh, Gabor, you, you enjoy, I know, one of, my, one of my subscribers, very much there. Um, in the third book, When the Sea King's Away, is just a really inventive undersea adventure, uh, which is kind of weird and wacky, and it's very much on that end of the, the spectrum, but works really well. Uh, and in the final one, Stardock, is the best of the the four stories um uh, it's just a great often very intense mountaineering story Hrissa is one of the best animal companions in a fantasy series ever um and it has you know some interesting things going on in it uh, the laws of Cornwall, which is the other big story in that fourth book by harry otto fisher is really good um it reminds me of of things like red nails particularly but but without being quite as insane and um and gruesome pretty gruesome though at points but laws of Cornwall is a very inventive story and a fitting contribution by fisher to lieber's universe uh, so that's my thoughts if you've read it tell me what you think in the comments um and maybe recommend other sword and sorcery authors and books that you really enjoy and maybe other great friendships in fantasy literature till next time